there never seems the right moment to start something for God. Right. There's right. always opportun- op- opposition. Everything I've done, all these mission outreaches that we've created over the years, yep. I've always started out broke. Right. And Vatra Village is, is coming up to almost $2 million in, in costs. And, uh, you know, we're still broke, but we're still building. And God has a yep. way of getting you through the beginning stage and the la- people laughing at right. you. And, you know, if a fox's tail brush against this wall, it's going to fall down. That's all part right. of the process of it building and, and establishing something for the kingdom of God. And someone might be watching right now, Aaron, and they're, they're in, the, in the, the, the theater or the shop front right. or whatever. And they're thinking, you know, I'm, I'm stuck here for the rest of my life. No, you are no. not. You no. are on your well, way and- to something else. You are on your way. And what is the idea? It's it's the couple that says, oh, we're, we're waiting. When we get ready, we'll get married. Or when we get ready, we'll have children. Uh, when, when we get pre- you're never going to be prepared. Never prepared. No. God does not look for our ability. He looks for our availability Ooh. and just the ability Ooh. to say, yes, God, I will. You can use me just like I am. So in those days where you don't feel prepared and you don't feel um, equipped, that's okay because it is not your spirit that is going to accomplish what needs to be accomplished. It is the same spirit as Romans 8 says that raised Jesus from the dead that living inside of us. It will give life to our mortal bodies. I love that verse. You know what that means? It means that in our weakness, he gives us strength. The same power that raised Jesus from the dead. So yes, it might be where you start and you feel like it's it's uh, it's it's a house of cards and it's all going to collapse and it's so unstable. You have a solid foundation if it's built on Jesus. And by the way, I still don't think we've made it. Like we're six locations and every Sunday I'm still asking, are people going to show up today? Is anybody going to be there? I still ask the same thing. It's the same thing with you know the the orphanage. Are we going to be able to make payroll this this year uh, month? Are we? A, you always absolutely. ask the same question. We just. We, this I last- pray, this last right. year with the pandemic, all the churches that we normally go to and, and, and are mm-hmm. part with our ministry, they all canceled and, and the services are postponed and all kinds of stuff. We had seven services last year in the entire year wow. for support. Wow. And the crazy thing is we grew in the pandemic. And uh, on is one day, and one day an orphanage three hours away contacted us and said, if you don't take these kids, they're on the street. And, and our kids in Moldova have more faith than I do because they've been watching this thing unfold. And so they, they, were no, they don't know what I know. They just think, yeah, God's right. going to do it. And they called right. up and says, you know, Dad, we want to, we want to open this next house. It, it, we're, we're fixing them up as we go around. And we want to start right away and we can take these kids in. I'm going, oh, my Lord, Jesus. I, <laughs> and guess what? The house was fixed. The kids are in, and we're continuing forward. You just said the same spirit. Something just caught in my heart when you spoke. Yeah. If the same spirit that raised Christ from the dead, listen to me, you can't be worse off than dead. Yeah, 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 that's true. Dead is as it's bad as true. you get. No. Yep. If you're watching just now and you're going through the, uh, you, you're in a hellacious season of your life and you're thinking, my goodness, nothing's working. I'm trying this and I'm doing right. this. My business isn't right. doing, my family isn't working out. Let me tell you something. You're still alive. When God right. began to work on Jesus, he was dead. <laughs> if God can raise Jesus from the dead and, and if that same spirit that raised right. Christ from the dead dwells in you. He's going to quicken yep. your situation and things that you yes. think are absolutely useless and, and, you know, it's never going to work. I've got news for you. Prophetically, God is up to something, even though you can't see. He's it. working behind the scenes. I'm, I'm writing my first book right now, and um, it's going to be released this year. And the, I, the, the topic, the title is called Unfair Advantage. And it's the idea that everything in your life that you think is unfair, God has actually set apart for your advantage. Absolutely. He uses all of our deficits to bring us towards our destiny. And it's the story of yes. Joseph yes. and how Joseph's life was so unfair. Nobody believed in him. His family rejected him. You Absolutely. know, his boss's wife tried to molest him. You know, like yeah. there was issue after issue after issue. But God used it for the good. So Absolutely. if you feel like you're in a struggling season, um, 
you, we live life forward, but we understand life backwards. So when we look backwards, we can go, oh, it makes oh, sense. No, God, God <laughs> involved in all of this. So I've learned to just test my faith to go, what is this story going to look like? Maybe if I can look forward for a little bit and go, when I look back, I'm going to look at this season and go, oh, wasn't God involved in that? That's why oh, he was stretching me. That's why he was getting me involved. Oh, um, I give one story where I did my first internship, I wanted to be a missionary. I wanted to be overseas. I wanted to be traveling the world. I want to reach lost people. And I go to this church in Oregon to do my internship. And when I show up to the church, the pastor says, I'm so glad you're here. You're here the next you know, nine weeks. Your first three weeks, you're going to spend in the children's ministry. I said, no way. I don't like children. I don't want anything to do with children. This oh, is not my wow. calling. And he says, nope. If you're going to learn ministry, you want to start in the children's ministry. And I remember wow. sitting there in those three weeks and I hated every bit of it. I put together a vacation Bible school. I did all the children's programs. And I thought, this is such a waste. Let me move on towards what I really want to do. Well, a year later, I get my first full-time opportunity to go as a full-time missionary. This organization was going to hire me to go over there and work in South Asia to work with 5,000 kids that had been affected by the tsunami. Wow. And my whole primary job was to put on programs for children in these wow. villages. Yeah, I had no clue that the Lord prepared me for this a year ahead of time yeah. in a season I didn't want to be in, doing a thing I didn't want to do. But God does not waste things in our life. So I just realized at that moment, man, for the rest of my life, if I'm in a season doing something I don't want to do, I am preparing, being prepared for what he has for me next, even if I don't understand it. He doesn't waste wow. time with us. He develops us in those dark seasons. The most beautiful thought, pictures are always developed in the dark room. I've got and a, everybody a saying, wants a beautiful picture, but nobody yeah, wants the dark room. The dark room. I've got a saying, nothing's wasted. Nothing's, nothing's wasted. wasted. And if yep, you're watching yep. us today and you're, and you're applying... What Aaron is saying in the circumstance, maybe you're in the kids' work right now. Maybe you're doing something yep. you absolutely yep. hate. Listen to me. Nothing is wasted. Mm -hmm. he, he plans out. I'm astonished. I've been preaching for 52 years now. And I look back over my life and I see things and I, and I watch. And when I went through them, I thought, my God, what are you doing? Don't you like me anymore? I thought you loved me. And when I first saw Andrew in that orphanage, I was brought there against my will by my dad, who was watching the news. And every day he was calling me up saying that our baby's dying. And I'm thinking, mm. stop this. He, and he had cancer surgery and, the, and we hadn't got the pathology back to see if he was cancer free or not. And he's on the phone every, every evening that our baby's dying. What do you plan to do about it? And I'm saying, Dan, leave me alone. Stop mm -hmm. this. You're sick, I'm busy. Let the Red Cross take care of this. I was in all the TV right. programs. I was selling a book that had sold 300,000 copies. I was setting myself yeah. up to be in all the TV programs. And that's what, my, that's what I thought was important. Nice house, swimming pool, Mercedes in the driveway. I, had, I ticked off all my boxes at 37 right. years of age. And this, this guy called my dad would not let me stop, would not let me rest. And, and finally, he said, well, if I die... On the way, I'm going by myself. And if I die on the way, it's your fault. Hmm. And I says, oh. and I got in a plane and flew to Scotland and drove to Romania, hated every wow. second of it and found my destiny. Wow. Isn't that crazy how it works? Destiny. And that's Absolutely. what God is working in your life right now, my friend, watching this program. Tremendous. Absolutely. I think... A lot of people do not despise those days where you feel like it's out of your comfort zone. It's out of your wheelhouse. It's it's not what anybody else would do. I've realized a lot of people give you good, at, I mean, unsolicited advice during those seasons where they go, well, this, this doesn't mark off the plan of where you're trying to go. But God doesn't work the way that people work. God works outside of our cultural system. That's why Romans 12 tells us, don't be conformed to the patterns of this world. Yes. So a lot of people are climbing a ladder of success and they don't even realize it's leaned against the wrong wall. You're climbing the wrong ladder. You're, you got to realize that it's not, God's way is different. So, so it, it's always countercultural. 
you know, the, the way to the top in the kingdom of God is serving. That's different than the world's perspective. You know, the world's perspective is fight as much as you can, you know, do as much as you can to get to the top. God's way is serving. Be the least among these. And then God's way of developing you many times is through dark, very difficult seasons. Absolutely. And so I tell people often, if your dream, I mean, if if your dream is not in the mature state yet, it's probably because you aren't either. So what God is doing is God is taking that moment and going, me. hey, you might not, you might not be, it might not be in that mature state that you think yeah. it should be. I'm not where I think I should be in this dream. I, I pictured it better than this. Well, that's probably because you're not at the mature state either. And God wants to develop you. And a lot of times we're praying for God to deliver us from the very thing he's trying to use to develop us. Boy, uh, you know, it's it's the relationship. You're trying to get out of it because it, it, it's, you know, you're, you're asking for deliverance from it. And God's going, no, I put you in that to develop you. I'm asking for deliverance from this job, but God's actually put you there to develop you. He's more interested in doing something inside of us than he is to doing something through us. And if you'll let him do it inside of you, he'll eventually do it through you.